Hey there, it's Wednesday, which means it's Ask Me Anything time, where I'm answering all your questions about the publishing industry and how to write a stronger story. Thank you so much to everyone, and keep the questions flowing. I'm loving doing these sessions and getting to speak to your specific concerns directly and cover some topics that are not otherwise anywhere on my channel, so that's been really exciting. Let's get some housekeeping out of the way first. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and join this amazing community of 17,000 story writers and story lovers. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. I also want to let you know about a free resource I created specifically for my YouTube viewers. It is in the description below and it's called my free story self-assessment. This is a worksheet that's going to help you take a critical eye to your current work in progress and try to pinpoint what the strengths and weaknesses are so that you can self edit and take it to the next level on the next draft. I know how hard it can be to evaluate your own work. So I designed the resource to help you do just that. It's also going to sign you up for my newsletter where I give exclusive tips and insights you won't find anywhere on my channel. So you don't wanna miss out on that. Without further ado, let's dive into the first question today. I wanted to ask you about author platforms. Is there a way of building an author platform without giving writing or publishing advice? I do want to start building my audience to potentially traditional or self-publish one day, but I don't feel comfortable giving writing advice to others. What are your thoughts on author platforms in general? I think it's a great idea for you to think about starting to build your author platform if it's something you want to do, because down the line, it will only help you if you self-publish or traditionally publish. In the case of self-publishing, having some kind of platform is almost essential because that's going to be a primary marketing channel and an asset for you to ultimately sell your book down the line. In the case of traditional publishing, author platforms can be very helpful for marketing reasons as well. Now, literary agents do not require authors that they sign to have any type of author platform. However, if an author comes to them and already has an author platform and a great book, then that only adds to the package and makes the deal that much sweeter for the literary agent. So it's great for book sales either way you go. Now, in terms of the content you want to distribute on your author platform, I don't think you necessarily have to give writing or publishing advice, especially if you don't feel comfortable doing that. Some other ideas would be to do book reviews or interviews with other authors or publishing professionals. That will still allow you to participate in the literary community, but you don't necessarily have to be giving explicit advice. Here's another question. I finally came to grips with all of the advice that said my manuscript word count was way too long for traditional publishing, so I went through the work to break it into two separate novels. However, I still have hopes of publishing it in its original form. I understand page count means higher costs for the publisher and hence more risk. My question for you is whether publishers would be willing to consider publishing the longer version if I was willing to take no advance other than paying my agent 15% fee or some other out of the box deal to shift the risk to me. For example, I buy up to X copies if they haven't sold in the first year, et cetera. I would love to know if you think publishers are willing to be flexible on deal structures. Unfortunately, especially with a debut author, I never saw a publisher being open to alternate or out of the box deal structures when we're talking about big five publishing houses. They have their standard contract and their standard deal structure of advance and royalties for a reason. That is how they conceptualize their profit and loss statements. So anything that is falling outside that realm is likely not going to be something they want to move forward with. So unfortunately, in your case, I think it will make the most sense to publish one novel or the other traditionally, maybe even a two part series of some kind would be more appealing to a publisher than what you are proposing in having one extra long novel and then trying to work out the finances so that it makes sense. Traditional publishing contracts are relatively rigid, unfortunately, and the industry is notoriously not very open to change. I'm not saying that it couldn't happen, but it is unlikely, especially for a debut author. You have to think about it from the publisher's side as well. What do they have to gain? from this type of deal when the book deals that they are used to doing have a more predictable sales structure and they're able to conceptualize how that deal fits into their company profit and loss, right? So because I don't see what they would really have to gain from doing an out of the box deal, it's unlikely that they would be interested. Here's another question. I'm currently stuck in the purgatory, that is the novella. I've had a few publishers say that they love it and would buy it, but they don't do novellas. Nice to know it's good, I guess. One editor suggested that I package it with other stories and try it that way, but even that is a long shot for a debut author. Since even small presses rarely publish novellas, 
Should I look at lip magazines and the like? I wouldn't get anything for it going that route, most likely, but that seems to be the best option. Yes, unfortunately, novellas are one of the genres I talk about in my worst genres for traditional publishing video because it is highly unlikely that a literary agent is going to make you a book deal for a novella for a number of reasons, the main one being that it falls out of the standard length which then affects the cost basis for production and therefore affects the pricing structure. And ultimately they don't see them making their money back on that type of book. So my advice would either be to expand the novella into a full length novel. That could actually be a good route, especially because you have gotten interest already from agents with the novella. But if that doesn't feel natural to the work, it's not organic and it's not what you want to do, then absolutely I would look at literary magazines who accept that length of story. You're right that that is likely not going to result in a large advance for you, though some literary journals do pay, but think about it in terms of what it will add, which is credibility, and you will have a publishing credential that you can put on your query letters down the line if you do write a full-length novel and reach out to literary agents. We have time for one more question today. Of the pool of available agents, what percentage have the ability slash connections to land you a big book deal? Do all have an equal chance to do so, or is there a hierarchy where some don't have as much of a chance as others? I'm curious if there is a select group of agents that have a large presence in the industry and can get you further as an author, or if they all have equal power in negotiations, connections, etc. Excellent question here. This is one of the nuances of the industry that are often not discussed online or even available for aspiring authors to learn about. So I really appreciate you bringing it up. The first point is that yes, there are agents that are highly reputable, have a huge sway in the industry, and how that manifests is if an editor at a publishing house sees a submission from this very prestigious agent, then they're going to immediately hop on it. When I worked in the industry, those were the submissions that we would take home and read overnight because we knew the next day someone would have made an offer. Those are the agents who are known for having very, very high quality books, for just being really great advocates for their authors and finding amazing author talent. So as with any industry, yes, there are the big hitters and those agents are going to be taken very seriously. The second point I wanna make though is about agents who maybe don't have as strong of a reputation. Do they still have sway and negotiating power? In my view, yes, they do. In fact, I was catching up with someone I used to work with in the industry and we got to talking about literary agents and she specifically said that she considers every single submission that crosses her desk, even if she doesn't know the agent personally. Of course, if an agent has a personal relationship and a strong reputation, that is going to impact how seriously a publisher considers the submission. However, she said point blank that she considers every single submission, even from quote unquote, no name agents or agents who are less experienced. So what does this mean for you as an author? Of course, the higher profile, more prestigious literary agents are going to be harder to secure. They likely already have very established clientele. They don't necessarily need to take on new clients and they're going to be more picky about who they take on as a client. That said, that doesn't mean you can't query them and you know reach for the stars. I do recommend doing that if that agent is a dream agent and seems to be a good fit for you. However, don't sleep on agents who have less experience but still have documented book deals with big five publishing houses. So the best way to check an agent's reputability is to buy a one day pass or a subscription to publishersmarketplace.com this is the database that lists all book deals that go through a traditional publisher and you can search the agent's name and it's going to tell you exactly the editor who bought the book and the imprint that bought the book, which indicates the publishing house who bought the book. They have a scale that lets you know what range of advance that author got based on the language they use in the post. Then I recommend querying a mix of agents that are newer in the industry, but maybe have a few book deals under their belt that align with the type of publisher you would want to work with and more experienced agents who are really heavy hitters and you know would get you a strong book deal. That's all we had time for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question. And if you have something you'd like to ask, please leave it in the comments here and it will be added to my queue. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button and grab the free story self assessment waiting for you in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.